Hi everyone, Sandy Grove, registered nurse here again with Health Tracks at Home. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about protein because it is National Nutrition Month. And again, we're going to pick up on where we left off. Last week, we talked about um, the types of proteins that we need uh, to have and why we need to have it. And today we're going to talk about how much we need to have. I'm going to cut down a little bit of what I was going to talk because we have a lot to talk about our pandemic. A lot of things have changed this week as well. We'll change next week as well. So recommendations for intake of protein and how do we calculate that? The recommended RDA is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day or divide your weight by 2.2 and then multiply it by 0.8. For a 150-pound woman, that will be about 55 grams protein a day. For a 180-pound man, that will be about 65 grams protein a day. Men need about 60 to 90 grams overall, and women 50 to 80 grams overall per day. This should be about 6 to 8 ounces of lean protein per day, or 25 to 30 grams per meal. Think of 25% is protein of each meal, and you'll get there. So what is a reference for how much protein? protein you got on hand, about three ounces of meat is equivalent to a deck of cards or a cell phone. So think of it that way. That kind of tells you how much you're eating. When illness is an issue, things change and you need more protein. So the recommendation is 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight, while noting the precise amount is going to be up to the physician and the dietitian that's working with, the, with you regarding your chronic illness um, and the severity of it. So at the 1.5 um, grams per kilogram level, a 150 pound woman would eat about 102 grams of protein, while the 180 pound man would eat about 123 grams of protein. And when you're sick and you're recovering and you might be recovering from surgery, they're gonna encourage you to take more protein intake. And this is one of the reasons why we burn it off, we use it up, we need more to heal. So in between those two, check with your doctor, um, I gave you the averages, which is 60 to 90 for men and 50 to 80 for women. So it's a good idea to look at it. I was eating way under, like I said last week, and I have increased it and um, I feel better, actually. So uh, COVID update, we're going to switch gears here over to that. When you've been fully vaccinated, what do you get to do? There's an entire article that I posted on the City View 50 Vibe page Please go there and read the entire things. It's very interesting. And Dr. Fauci also had a news briefing yesterday and talked about most of these things, plus more about the next immune compromised tier that is going is coming our way this next week in many places across the United States. So based on what we know about COVID-19 vaccines, people have been fully vaccinated, get to go back into the world and do things. It just got really dark do things um, a little different thing than we've been doing. So first of all, how do you know that you've been fully vaccinated? I know there's been a lot of yes, no, two, threes. Okay, they finally came out with it. Two weeks after your second dose for a two-dose series like Pfizer or Moderna, and also two weeks after the single dose or the J&J &J vaccine, then you um, would be fully vaccinated. Remember to keep those precautions until you're fully vaccinated. Always wearing your mask, social distancing, et cetera. But once you've been fully vaccinated, a couple of things changed. So you can gather indoors with fully vaccinated people without masks. I love that. So you got to grill everybody to find out if they're fully vaccinated and if they've waited the appropriate two weeks after their last dose. Also, you can gather indoors with unvaccinated people from one other household without masks. Unless someone in that other household is immune compromised because you do not want to put them at risk. So the other caveat is if you live in um, group settings like, you know, a retirement facility, et cetera, if you are um, around someone who has COVID, you're still going to do the quarantining for 14 days and getting tested. But for those of you that are fully vaccinated and you're around someone who has COVID, you do not need to stay away. You do not need to quarantine and you do not need to get tested <clears throat> on an average basis. So that you kind of get out of that as well. But if you have symptoms, go get tested because you may have a variant, even though you've been vaccinated. What hasn't changed? For now, if you've been fully vaccinated, you would still need to take those steps to protect yourself and others in situations where you need to wear a mask, social distance, six feet apart, 
and avoid those crowds and those poorly ventilated areas outside is still best. Take these precautions whenever you are in public, you're gathering with unvaccinated people from more than one other household, visiting with unvaccinated people um, that have increased risk and are, are um, possible for COVID. Please make sure you protect them. You should still avoid medium or large size gatherings. You should still delay domestic and international travel. You should still watch for symptoms of COVID-19. Like I said, you could get one of the variants, even though you've been vaccinated, we still don't know out there. So what, are, what do we know and what are we still learning? There are quite a few things out there. We do know that the vaccines are very effective at preventing COVID-19 disease, especially severe illness and death. So that's a wonderful thing to have that peace of mind. We're still learning though, how effective the vaccines are against the variants and the, the word is still out on that. Right now it looks like they are and they're doing a lot of research and keeping up on it. So they're being honest, we're still learning. Um, we know that other prevention steps help stop the spread of COVID-19 and that these are still important um, even as vaccines are being distributed. So keep those masks going and the social distancing, et cetera. Uh, we're still learning how well COVID vaccines keep people from spreading the disease. They're not quite sure about that. Are we contagious once we have the vaccine? They're looking at that. Also, we're still learning how long COVID-19 vaccines protect people. The jury is still out if it's three months, four months, et cetera. We gotta wait a little bit longer to see how people are doing and if we remain covered after three months. So next week we will talk about, hopefully we're gonna hear that we're in the red tier. It looks like we're on our way. The governor is planning if we hit 2 million doses of vaccine given this week, then he's going to change the, the uh, tiers for the purple and the red and the orange and it's going to effectively allow us to go into the red tier automatically. So we're almost there uh, this week at 8.9, I think it is. So that's great news. So exercise tip of the day, tiny habits. One little thing at a time has big effects. So change a habit to another time of day that you normally do and sometimes forget. So a good example is you do your stretching at night, but you're tired and then you forget to do it. So try switching your stretching in the morning. Uh, we always think of stretching as the end of the day or end of activity act, uh, type idea, but you know, it's good. You could stand at the sink. You turn on your coffee, like we talked, like sweet, and you do, you know, marching in place. You can do your side leg lifts. You can do toe raises. The other thing is you can do your side stretches, arms above your head while you're waiting for your coffee to be uh, made. So think about those little changes, increasing the ability to do those things that you don't always accomplish that you want to accomplish. Memory preservation tip of the week. It's another mnemonic. We, this is the third one, I think. Acronyms. An acronym is a word that is made up by taking the first letters of all the keywords or ideas that you need to remember um, to create a new word that helps you remember that information. So an example is the word homes, H-O-M-E-S, to help you remember the Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. There are many acronyms out there that we use on a daily basis. So this way you can try your own and see if it helps you remember some of those things that are vitally important. I got to figure out an acronym for the fruit of the spirit <laughs> so that we could go down the line and go, this is, this, you know, this makes this word and we remember the fruit of the spirit. So it's a good thing for Bible memorization as well. Stress reliever of the day. I'm going to go back and I'm going to encourage laughter. It's very good medicine, as the word of God says. And when you hear laughter, move towards it. Even though we're social isolating um, in this world, it is good for us to find those happy people that are actually telling jokes or, or making people happy. Um, and most people like to share things over again so that you can get involved and listen to the story that they were telling. When you hear laughter, seek it out and try to join in. It's a very positive thing in this pandemic world. We need to laugh some more. So as always, like I said, I get my information from reliable sources. This week it was the CDC and helpguide.org. Um, and I pray that if there's, if there's any questions, please ask your healthcare provider and they will clarify it for you. May God bless you until next time, keep you safe. Remember we, do, we still are in the purple tier, so we still need to wear those masks, social distance six feet and wash our hands and stay out of large gatherings. 
Till next time, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.